This is the Volvo Ninjas Podcast, Episode 2, Everyone Has Their Favorite Headlights. So what, what, what's your history with Volvos? Like, how did you come to be a Volvo person? Well, really, it was almost a toss-up between uh, my Volvo A50 and a Volkswagen Jetta TDI. And, oh, well, the, the TDI is all right. Yeah, no, I, actually, um, the reason why Jack Bombay... Uh, made that uh, thread about the uh, his tampered TDI was I PM'd him yesterday because I was really curious about it because, you know, I, I test drove the TDI, I trust test drove the 850. And uh, the 850, it was in immaculate condition and it was a Volvo. What year My, was it? My stepdad's boss had an 850 and he put 350,000 miles on the odometer wow. and he sold it just because he was sick of the car. He was making, you know, he was making six figures and he needed to drive something besides a 93 55. You're driving, and, uh, you're driving a 93? Oh, he, he was driving a oh. 93. My stepdad's a uh, boss. Oh, okay. And I mean, 350,000 miles with like, you know, just basic maintenance that right there essentially sold me on the 850 and the fact that it was in immaculate condition. But, uh, I came very close to getting that turbo diesel, especially when I was doing 70 at the bottom of an on-ramp without even knowing it. I'm yeah. like, wow, this thing picks up like no other. Yeah, but the maintenance on those Jettas is a nightmare. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the one thing that I, you know, that really took me away from it was when I was talking to the, one of the service techs about the uh, um, man, or the turbo on it because I had a feeling that uh, the turbo you know it wasn't proper the car itself wasn't properly maintained and the turbo was going to be going and he's like oh yeah well you'll have to replace the manifold with it as well and that's just like oh god now get me away from this so what year is your 850 well, it's a 96 oh, okay so yeah yeah, yeah. well because when yeah. you mentioned the 93 that uh your you say your dad's boss was driving right you don't see many 93s out there I mean, if you'll, you can, no, hunt, you, don't. you can hunt for like a 94, you might stumble upon, a, but not a 93 is really hard to find, really hard to find. It was like, that was their first year bringing the 850 into the uh, yeah. American market, I believe. Yep. And it's just really hard to find. <laughs> yeah. Sense. But uh, he drove that thing into the ground and, you know, yeah. I planned on doing that with mine. I really don't ever foresee myself getting rid of my car i just plan on adding on to the collection as my income permits it so add, adding on to that car or other other volvos well i mean to to a collection of cars like i mean i'm always going to have my 850 <laughs> station wagon but you know down the road i might well it's definitely there's definitely going to be more volvo station wagons in my future oh. like i said as soon as income <laughs> permits it it's that's the only thing that's holding me back now yeah, my 850 is silently sitting in front of the house with its broken engine mount and um, other issues that are resultant of that broken mount. It's very sad. It's very sad. Ew, like what other issues? Uh, like I can only imagine. But... <laughs> well, it also needs a timing belt, but that actually is not one of the problems. Actually, right now, I think it's somehow dislodged the somehow the battery and alternator thing. Like it'll... You can jump it and it'll run, but it won't hold a charge. I think the battery's finally dead. Um, but it like when it's on, it like pulses, like with the in the lights pulse with the engine. Like vroom, 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 vroom. it's oh no, <laughs> it's it's not a good situation. Um, but it, it has like a two hundred, I want to say two hundred and five thousand miles on it, uh, and and it's like the interior is great, exterior is great. Of course, North Carolina car, no rust. Um, but it, nice. I, I got a feeling it needs fifteen hundred dollars worth of work. So, yeah, you know, it'll it'll sit there for a little bit longer. But I've got two other cars that can get me around well enough. So, very sad, very sad yeah. indeed. What are your other cars? Uh, I have an eighty two two forty two turbo and an eighty two two forty four turbo. 
So one the the two forty four is manual transmission. It's actually a really nice ride, but it's like it's the one I mentioned before. It it spent some of its life in Ohio, and therefore it has like, uh, yes the 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 rust to prove that fact. I was actually really lucky when I got my car. It was pretty much rust free, but uh, the one that I had before that was dying of the rust cancer. But, uh... <laughs> Uh, so you... well, well, what's what's really interesting to me though is, did like Volvo make a ridiculous number of 240s in the year 1982? Because it seems that almost everyone has an 82 240. It's a really good question because one model year that's really hard to find in the 240 is the I seem to think is is the 84. It's really hard to find 84 240s. You you'll find an really? 83, 82 is like you said you can find like everywhere but for some you could reason walk out of your door and hit one yeah it's <laughs> like you know oh my god i just tripped over your 240 you know whatever but like it, yeah it's interesting uh it'd be interesting to actually see production and sales numbers for those cars it'd be really interesting because for a long time i was looking at a an 84 240 that was local it had i think it had 190,000 miles on it great shape but you just can't 84 for some reason is really hard to find. So if you're like looking at a. Well, well, not that that really matters all that much. I mean, from what I've gathered, and granted, I've never really dealt with uh, the 240s, but it's essentially all interchangeable from 74 to 93 or whenever the production line was. Well, I, except for the engine. Like there were some engine. Oh, okay. they, they changed engines. I, and I don't quote me on this, but I think in 83, they went over from a. Uh, Two, I want to say that it's like 21 something F to like the 230 something. I'm not even going to say it because I'll put it online. 230. Yeah, yeah. yeah some, mm. they, they did some change. And actually, there's a Volvo shop in town that won't do, typically, won't do prior to 83, which I think was the first year of the, the other engine. And I've, it's interesting because the the 82, which is what I have, some of the engine parts are a little harder to get to in that that engine that configuration whereas a little bit later everything almost everything is like right in your face and so easy to get to so so there's some changes but basically like a lot of the body and then there were the headlight changes i think in 86 or 85 they went from the quad yeah light. well there were there were headlight changes all around i mean everyone has their favorite headlights on the front of a 240 but uh yeah yeah see i'm a, I'm a four headlight guy so that's why I can't really get into the later. Well, for headlights, but square around. The one thing that square. really pissed me off about Cameron's uh, 245 project is that he got rid of the quad rounds. See, I'm I'm a I'm a square round a square light guy. Yeah. All right. I. Mm. But see, they got rid of the, the. See, I wish we had like two or three more people on the call. And they'd be like, "No, that's wrong." <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, we, this, this needs to be like a roundtable <laughs> discussion. 